Hi, and welcome to this session on how to select the most effective social media platforms based on your target market. So this is a comprehensive guide by myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle Fontonda, and I have a PhD in leadership and management. And I have transitioned from the conventional belly to belly, trying to get people on the phone and being rejected all the time saying no, and finding that in order for me to put 25 customers into a room, I need to phone 100. And I decided no more of that. So this guide is going to show you how I have managed to master social media and make on a bad month $2,500 and a good month between nine and ten thousand dollars a month by utilizing social media now this is now going to be your social media marketing all right so let's have a look and see how we can now master that so nowadays i am actually known as a digital grandmother okay so my target market is different but i really want to help you to master social media and get those clients coming in into your funnel now it doesn't happen overnight but there is a strategy to walk towards so let's now have a look at what we're going to cover here. We're going to cover understanding your target audience, which some of you have probably done already. We're going to have an overview of major social media platforms and how you're going to find and where you're going to find your ideal customer. Platforms. Now, we need to understand that you need to match your platform to your target market. So we'll have a look at that too. And then of course, how do you create a multi-platform strategy? So you can go onto the various different platforms. So let's start off by saying, how do we understand our target market? Now for you, some of you may have done this, but some of you might not have done it in detail. So let's have a look. Firstly, what age group does your target market fit into? Remember, we don't just throw the mud on the wall and we think we're going to apply to everybody because we might not be. So if you're potty teaching people to potty train, well, corporate dads are not looking for that. So you need to make sure what platform are you on and you need to find those mums that are on various different platforms. Then, of course, gender. Now, gender, you need to decide what target market are you looking for? So if you are, for example, I am extremely passionate about empowering entrepreneurs, specifically females. So my target market is, I don't leave your gents out, I love you too, I still train you how to create seven streams of income. However, sometimes I might only be looking for how in this particular area do I want to target market females. So then my strategy would be specifically for females. Okay, interest. What interests and hobbies does your target market like? So if you are doing leadership development, for example, in what industry are you wanting to market? So you might decide you want to focus on a specific industry. So the interests are going to be different to those automotive people are going to be different to, for example, horse riding. Okay, so look at the interest so that you know where to go find your audience. Now, location. Where is it that you're focusing on? Is it only in a country? Is it only, again, location could be not just geographic, but it could be industry. So identify that location and hone in on that. Then there's online behavior. Now, each of these different target audiences of yours behave differently online. So if you've got a stay-at-home mom, for example, she is going to only be online when baby's sleeping. But if you're honing in, for example, on um, car lovers, well, they're actually going to do it in different hours. So realize what is their online behavior. Now, you can identify this through different strategies that you can use to find this information out. So one of them would be what kind of tools could you use in order to get this information? Now, most of you coaches out there have probably already coached people. So you could send your existing audience, clients that you've already served, a survey and ask them various different questions. For example, what are their interests? What are their hobbies? You should have actually got that information while coaching them, but if you didn't, you can still ask them. Then you can ask them, for example, 
when and what platforms do they like? What social media platforms do they on? What are their interests? Where do they go find? What are they searching for? What, did, what kind of videos would they be looking at? All right. And then you need to analyze these tools. Once you've got this information, you need to analyze it. So there are various different platforms that you could utilize to actually create your analytics. Well, mine is my favorite. I haven't mentioned it very much in this particular presentation, but ChatGPT does that for you. All right. So be clever with Mr. Chat and he or she will help you as well. Then there's your market research. Once you've created and collected your information, you've analyzed your information, you must now go and do your market research and collect the information. So let's give you some ideas of what the different platforms would be looking at. So let's maybe have a look at Facebook first. Facebook, let us look at some pros and cons of Facebook. Your pros are, it's a very large user base. So you guys, you can get a lot of clientele just coming off your Facebook. Then it's got a diverse demographics. Everybody that knows everybody started off on Facebook. Excellent ad targeting um, options. So once you've got your analytics, you know who your target is and you know exactly who you're going to hone in on, then what you can do is use your Facebook ads if you wanted to. If you didn't want to just go organic, you can do that. Another wonderful thing about Facebook is it has creative groups and communities specifically in your target market. So you can go onto those groups, click onto those groups, add value on those groups. Please don't go and spam people and advertise and that kind of thing. Don't do that. In our marketing strategy, we'll teach you how to do this. But you go in to a group, add value on a group. Those that resonate with you, those that have got to know, like, and trust you, they are going to follow you on Facebook. They then become your clientele. Please don't spam people. The cons are it's decreasing engagement among the younger audience. All right. They've moved on to newer and more trendy platforms. Okay. And it's organic reach is limited. So please, you're going to have to do your work if you want to master Facebook. You cannot just do Facebook on your own. And later on, I will do a complete Facebook strategy that will help you immensely market uh, Facebook. Okay, Instagram, pros are it's highly visual platform. And we'll go a little bit more detail, detail into each of these. Strong engagement, popular with the younger audience, and really great for brands, which is fashion, beauty, travel, food. Love those kind of things. All right. So if you could be a, um, a coach that's coaching leadership, but you could be a foodie. Guys, you could start your own Instagram page with a foodie stuff and all your followers are going to start following you. Once you get them and we'll teach you how to put them into your funnel, they're in your funnel, they're already getting to know, like, and trust you, and then how you could advertise your programs to them. All right, cons. Algorithm changes uh, can affect the visibility, so be aware of that. I know I was getting amazing visibility on Instagram. I did a silly thing. I changed my, my caption in um, my title and whoa, my Instagram went down. All right, I was going from seven to eight to 9,000 views per, per, per um, uh, post, and it went right down to 12 and 13. So be very careful with Instagram. Let's, um, it's less effective for the business to business, it's more person to person, right? So if you're looking to market your coaching program specifically to businesses and not individuals, Instagram is probably not the platform for you to be marketing on. Okay, let's have a look at LinkedIn then. The pros for LinkedIn, it's a professional network. It is absolutely ideal for business-to-business -business marketing. So if business-to-business, -business, your coaching program is specifically for businesses and organizations to take their people to the next level or to teach. Um, you could be in health and safety, then you need to be staying on LinkedIn and not so much on Instagram. All right. Excellent for personal branding, recruiting, and a great amount of thought leadership um, goes through here. But there is a lot of people you need to compete with, so you need to have the professional edge. Cons, it's very less engaging for business to customer. So if it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's not going to really work for you. Content needs to be more formal and professional. 
Um, you know, it, uh, really, it's not the place to be unless you're recruiting chefs and you want to coach chefs. Foodie is not really the brand for you to be there on, on LinkedIn. All right. Okay, so let's have a look at Twitter. Pros, it's real-time updates. Great for news and trending topics. If you want to keep up there going fast and furiously, amazing. Good for customer service and engagement. All right. Its cons are, its characters are limited to the amount, but you could put your uh, blog link in there and drive them to a blog that they could read in detail. All right. Fast-paced um, feed and can cause your content to be buried very quickly. So be aware of that and have a strategy for this. Okay. TikTok. All right. For those massively popular for your Gen Z and your millennials. So if those are the people you want to coach, then this is where you need to be. But you need to be very strategic on how you're going to draw them in. Okay, highly engaging short-term video content. TikTok nowadays is asking for um, great longer videos, but the clients haven't bought into that yet. So not everybody watches a two-minute video or a 10-minute video. So be aware of that. I'm going to be posting this onto my YouTube and then I'm going to be taking seven second snippets out of it and saying, hey, this is how you can engage and then drive them to my YouTube channel. All right. Excellent for viral marketing. The cons are, and sorry, creative freedom with trends and challenges. All right. So if you've been able to have a challenge, um, moms, how do you potty baby your, your kids and how many days did it take you? What's the challenge? You could do that. All right. For all those TikTok moms that are out there, you could possibly work on that. It's um, cons are requires frequent content updates. Guys, you got to be, if you're on TikTok, you got to beat the others and you've got to have your, your daily content on there. All right. Less suitable for the older demographics. However, the older community is starting to go across onto TikTok. But maybe if you're marketing your coaching programs, it might not be the platform for you. Okay. Algorithm changes can impact visibility. Listen, I've just said it might not be the platform for you. But let me tell you something. If you are using um, training dogs, how to do something, um, and you want to put something out there and you want to coach people on how to train dogs online, that kind of thing, then you could do it on TikTok. You could have some amazing challenges and people love animal videos. So TikTok will go viral for you. All right. So be aware of that. So just again, analyze your clientele and where you want to be. Okay. Let's have a look at um, a few other things on matching platforms with audience preferences. So now we're going to have a look at how to match your platform features with your audience preferences, real life examples of brands successfully using various different platforms, and then tips on exper um, experimenting and analyzing which platform best works for your specific audience. So let's hop into this. Okay. All right. <laughs> if it's going too fast, don't worry. Just go through this. Then slow it down later, pause it, and watch it again. All right, so let's look at how to match platform features with audience preferences. Okay, visual platforms. Best for visual content, images, videos, and popular among the younger demographics is going to be your Instagram. All right, please understand it has to be best content. All right, great visuals. Please don't lose your clients with poor quality content. Professional platforms is your LinkedIn. That's I've mentioned this before. It's your um, your business to business uh, marketing, and it's preferred for professionals. Again, real time platforms. Your Twitter, great news updates. If your business is fast moving, and um, like let's take AI for example, you're coaching on AI. People want the constant update, whatever's going on there, and it's suitable for brand frequent updates. All right, so if you've got a brand you're selling out there and you're um, focusing on the brand, then go with the brand. Okay, creative platforms, those are your TikToks. Like I said before, they're like short, engaging videos, ones that they can stick with and send to their friends and like and comment. Um, popular among your Gen Z and millennials. We've said that, uh, reiterating this, but remember, this is showing you how important it is for you might be um, wanting to train dogs. Um, or skills on how to be an archer. All right, I'm an archer, and I, but finding me on LinkedIn 
to coach me as an archer is not where I'm going to go look for it. I'm more than likely going to go and look on Facebook, belong to a Facebook group, and learn some facts and figures about archery on Facebook. All right. So understand that you've got to master the right place for your right audience. Okay. All right, real life examples of brands being successful on each of the platforms. Here's a really good example, fashion brands. Your fashion brands, um, your fashion icons, everybody that's out there with regards to fashion, using visual content to showcase your various different products. Listen, if you are in, um, I don't know, an industry that creates lifestyle, you could go onto a lifestyle brand. Another great brand for um, Instagram is your fitness brand. Fitness will work so well if you learn how to master and put the right posts on. You know, um, with fitness, unfortunately, you need to put yourself out there. So I know a fitness coach. She's absolutely phenomenal. She's probably the best fitness coach that I know. Her her no bullshit attitude, her putting you in the right place, giving the right exercises for you and all the rest of it, but she will not put her face out there. And so therefore she will never master clients coming into her because she's not prepared to put herself out there. Remember, it's all about what clients do you want. Now, tech companies, um, your um, motor industry companies, all those kind of companies, they love LinkedIn, all right? They love sharing industry insights, job opportunities, all those kind of things people love on LinkedIn. So if people are looking for articles, they're looking for information, um, promotion, very few people are going to get coaching clients just off LinkedIn, all right? I'm not saying it's impossible, but what I'm saying is if you're looking for one-on-one, -on -one, you might not find them on LinkedIn unless you target market people who specifically believe in personal growth. Now, if you can find people on LinkedIn that love personal growth and want to grow personally, then they are prepared to spend their own money to promote, to up upgrade themselves and become better. You'll find them on LinkedIn, but you need to target market them specifically. All right. News outlets, Twitter, post real-time news, news updates. Your influence is a lot of them on TikTok and also on Instagram, creating viral trends and challenges. Okay, okay. so now let's have a look at real-life examples of brands being very successful utilizing various different platforms. Now, one of them that's really good, and if you have a look at Instagram, Instagram is really good for fashion brands. Fashion brands that are out there, They've been able to put their visual content out and they're showcasing their products. Another one that's really, really, really good in Instagram is in actual fact your health and fitness industry or else your foodie industry. So those are the industries that Instagram loves. Your foodies are going to go there. Um, your chefs are going to go there. Your fashion brands, those kind of things are going to go there. So if you've got some really good content, visual content to showcase your product. Okay, so that would be um, Instagram. Then, of course, your tech companies on LinkedIn for anything that's got like industry insights where you've got job opportunities, those kind of things are really, really, really good in LinkedIn. Now, that could be the motor, automotive industry, oil industry, retail industry, whatever you can add a little bit of content um, insights into that so people can learn, they were going to come to you. Then you've got your news outlets, which is if you've got something that's going to update news times all the time, is obviously your Twitter. And TikTok is creating those viral trends, challenges. Um, like I said, your stay-at-home moms potty training your babies, um, training your dogs, whatever it might be. Um, it could be really a great place for you to, to put your stuff on TikTok and create some challenges. Let's have a look now at some tips on experimenting and analyzing which of the platforms actually work best for your specific audience. Now, it's very important to understand that you need to, once you've put your posts out, your A and B testings of different types of content, working in different places, um, it is about all the time monitoring. Monitoring the engagement metrics, monitoring everything. And if you know me and you've been coached by me, you will always know that I say measure, monitor, and adjust. 
what are you measuring? You need to know what you're measuring. You need to monitor it and see how it goes and then adjust. He who adjusts the quickest wins it. All right, it's like that early bird that gets up first in the morning is going to catch the worm. Although you can get worms all day long, but he who gets it first gets it first. All right. Gathering your feedback from your audience. We've spoken about that. It's so important for you to do your surveys. Get information from the people you've already coached. Find out where they are on social media, how they're focusing on social media, um, which platforms they love, what they love, what content do they love, what drew them to you. All right. So gather that information. Adjusting strategies. I've said that. For, uh, based on performance, measure, monitor, and adjust. Once you've posted at least 20 posts, measure them, monitor them, adjust, have a look, then get into a routine of once a week. What is that day that if you're not going to do it yourself, who's going to do it for you to check out your analytics? All right. I love to use, um, like I said earlier on, ChatGPT does it for you. Download your um, data from whatever platform you're on. Pass it on to chat and ask them to analyze it or give you a report and you can work from there. All right. Staying updated on platform changes. Very important to know when the algorithm has changed on a platform. And I remember um, with um, my um, Instagram, I mean, I was getting thousands of views. And then, of course, when I changed just one massive thing, actually, and I only them, and now I'm starting in 12 and 13 views and now I've got to re-strategize all over again because I didn't stay updated on my platform changes. So be aware of that. Okay, let's now have a look at creating multiple platform strategy. Now, it is important for us to have a look at that. So important on diversifying your presence across platforms. It's also tailoring your content for each platform while maintaining a consistent brand voice. And then what tools could you use in managing and scheduling these posts across these different platforms? So let's get into the importance of diversifying your presence across multiple platforms. Now, if you're just starting out, go to one platform. Start on one platform, then move across to the next platform. All right, but first, you will know what platform to start on if you've done the homework up front and identified your target audience. Who is your ideal customer? Who wants you as a coach? What industry are you in? And then go with that platform, once you've mastered that platform, then grow on to another platform. Okay, so one of the things that is really great about multiple platforms is the fact that you will reach a broader audience. It's obvious. Then migrate platform specific risks. Uh, mitigate, sorry, mitigate. It's so important for us to realize that various different risks are on one platform if you stay there only. Like, for example, if I was only on Instagram, I would be battling to make my monthly income right now online if I'd focus on because my, my, my views went right down from thousands to tens. OK, so because the algorithm changed because I did something silly. But the fact that I am on YouTube, I am on uh, Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on um, LinkedIn, I'm on TikTok. All right. I'm on all those platforms. It did not hinder my income. All right. So it's very important for us to realize that. Now, enhance content strategies and engagement. It's very what it is going to do. It's going to help you to identify how to interact with different audiences, although they may be in the same demographic, but their likes and their trends are differently. So it's going to help you. And also it will enhance your um, engagement, which you will find on various different platforms. OK, sorry, that's me just putting my dog down. All right, tailoring your content for each platform while maintaining a consistent brand voice. Now, understanding your platform's specific norms and preferences, like we've covered before, just to reiterate, Instagram users favor high quality visuals. Guys, if you're going to go on Instagram and you're not going to put high quality visuals, visuals, you can come short. People are just going to scroll past you and say that you're not serious. So please make sure that whatever you're posting, on Instagram is high quality. LinkedIn audiences are looking for that insights. Guys, you've got to be adding value in your industry if you're focusing on LinkedIn audiences. All right. TikTok thrives on creative and short videos. We've covered that. Okay, so now how do we adapt content format to and tone appropriately? Well, remember 
You had detailed articles or professional updates all on your LinkedIn, casual and engaging language on Instagram, um, and your captions need to be there. Um, adopt a fun and loving, lively tone for TikTok videos. Consistency, consistency in branding elements, logos, color schemes on overall. So you can post on the different ones. You're going to have the same post, but it's got to be approached differently, put in differently, and also keep your theme all the way through. Leverage platform features to enhance brand storytelling. Guys, it's so important that, for example, Instagram stories. You may post a reel or a post on Instagram, but if you're not actually putting it into the stories, another place that's really amazing that none of us think of, and I've only just remembered it now, is actually on um, Telegram. You can put your story in Telegram as well, so everybody who's following you on can actually see your stuff on Telegram. So please don't forget to put in stories. Even if you're posting on TikTok, you post your TikTok reel, but click on stories. LinkedIn is about articles, Twitter is about threads, TikTok is about challenges and different ways to engage with your audience. So be creative. If you train firewalking, then TikTok is your place to put firewalking. If you want to walk on glass, well, go walk on glass, um, but TikTok people will love it. All right. Not my thing, but happy days. <laughs> all right tools for managing and scheduling your posts across different platforms streamline your content by scheduling and publishing you can use social media management tools like hootsuite buffer social sprout really great for streamlining your content um, you can spend one day creating content for the week uh, if you're doing it all yourself remember at the beginning we might not be able to pay for various people to do various things all you will have to do is um Create the content, create the video, create the, the scheduling, everything. Put it on Hootsuite and it will schedule for you. Centralizing your analytics, please. You can remember, measure, monitor, adjust. Tools such as Social B, Later, Zoho can provide centralized analytics. I use uh, ChatGPT. Okay, collaborative features and workflow management platforms like Trello. Please plan out your months. If you really want to be good on social media, you need to have a content calendar. Understand what it is you want to say. What's the pain point? How are you going to solve the, this, this um, situation? I love to use Trello. You can use Asana and CoSchedule to integrate your social media management strategies. Now, guys, you all know this stuff. But the thing that I've realized as coaches specifically is that the good old fashioned way, and I've mentioned this before, in order to get 25 people in a room, you've got to pick up the phone and you've got to phone and keep selling to 100 people and you've got to end up having 75 no's, very demoralizing. If you have set up yourself a system where you are promoting your content online and then what you are doing is utilizing a social media strategy where you have an automated system where they can click into the information, get automated funnel from you and the whole system is automated, then you are going to find it easier to post to your people. So you have email marketing is really, really, really impactful. Emails equals income. So please understand it is important. So I would love to share with you one of the projects that I am embarking on is empowering people to master social media correctly and being successful on social media. So what I want you to do is I want you to grab a copy, go into my YouTube um, channel. Here you're going to click this video, Three Secrets to Earning 30Ks in 90 Days. Now these secrets that are here are teaching you how to to leverage an automated system, how to leverage content that you place on, how to leverage social media so that you can have an automated business coming in. So even though you've got a, a coaching business and you want to have a coaching program, you can actually do that even though you're sitting on holiday, the sales are going to continuously come in. Now I'm going to highly recommend that you spend some time watching this video. Now, I have started off when I started with this video. I'm a coach. I've utilized this program to actually get my coaching clients. My husband has utilized this program to get his coaching clients. And as the clients come in, we're able to schedule them and get onto calls with them and coach online. 
it is the way of the future. We know technology has changed. We know this is the way to we way to go for all of us. Now, nothing says that you can't get your belly to belly client if you're target if you're focusing on a location. So, for example, if I only wanted belly to belly clients, I would still utilize my social media, but specifically in my area. And I would target market people in my area. And when I target market in my area, I then will be able to set up appointments with my clients and still do belly to belly, if that's what you prefer. But I do have overseas clients, and those overseas clients, we work online. If you want to find out, Forbes magazine says that online marketing, online businesses, digital marketing is the way of the future. And even if you're teaching maths, I mean, I was at my auditors the other day and um, they were stamping and she was um, authorizing some documentation for me. And her husband was actually coaching engineering and maths online. So even though he was sitting at home and he was working and, and as an engineer, he was taking his skills and gifts. He's a professor as well, and he could do it online. And they would show it into the classroom. So guys, you need to learn how to use social media. So please watch this. And you may not want to promote the social media program that I'm promoting. But if you do the things right and package your product, you will be able to master social media. So I just want to say thank you. And I want you to go to my website, plug it in, look at the different types of social media programs that you need to be coached on, belong to our community and start being coached on a daily basis. For what, It's a once off fee. You do not have to pay monthly fees, no monthly fees, but you will be coached. You can hop onto calls with coaches that are making a fortune online and you do not have to pay. I know that I wanted to belong to a very loud I did belong to a very loud coach that's out there online, but I had to pay monthly. With this, we're tapping into those people and they are coaching and mentoring us for free. No monthly fee. Make a difference in your life and change your coaching career. I wish you all the best and I look forward to seeing you on the inside of our community. Take care.